Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, making some really great trades and right now we can see that Bitcoin had another massive leg up towards the upside here absolutely crazy we did run into some resistance like i said yesterday right around 23 22,300, and we did stall out a bit there after running into 22,500. we got a bit of a dip all the way down to 22,800, and then recovered very nicely as you guys can probably tell today we had a massive rally of 11 percent in bitcoin followed by some very nice upside as well in the altcoins and right now let's take a look at the s p 500 because we got another big down day today in the s p we were down a significant amount but we recovered very nicely near the end of the day we basically ended it ending the day flat here on the s p uh, you guys can see on the other chart as well for the s p and it actually looks a little bit different here let me get on the daily time frame for you so you can see we actually ended up closing the day with a nice green candle here but we were down on the day as we did gap down lower all right okay so let's keep going here basically the s p was down today because of all the the major banks failing i'll just cover this very quickly right now so we had some really big problems in the banking sector uh, with the small regional banks collapsing and i mean like everything almost every small regional bank was down Today, you can see a Trust Financial Corporation was down 16%. First Horizon Corporation was down over 20%. First Republic Bank was down more than 61%. I don't even think that this is the the, the, the biggest one, too. There was some, sorry, there was some bigger some bigger losers. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. Western Alliance Corporation was down a significant amount, but had a huge rally near the end of the day. You can see from... Uh, peak to trough you can see right here was up take <laughs> from the lows it's up 249 percent it went as low as seven dollars and had a huge bid back up near the end of the day i mean just look at this chart how crazy it is huge gap down and then started rallying towards the uh basically near uh near near the the beginning of the day after after we hit the lows and it's just kept going back up since then i mean that is absolutely crazy all right, let's keep going here. Let's take a look at Bitcoin and what could be, let's uh, analyze what we could be coming next. Some price targets, right? Some price, since, uh, sorry, some price targets for support and resistance. So right now we do have some resistance coming in right around 22,300, oh, sorry, 24,300. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired today, but we had a really great day in the, in the trading room today. So again, if you guys want to get access to all my trades, the link is in the description. But if you want to join us for some day trading, all members are welcome. I'm going to be doing some trading for the next two weeks. So it's in the, inside the Discord. The link's in the description. All members are free to join. We start at 8.30 a.m. and we finish at 4. All right, let's keep going here. So right now we are looking a little bit overbought on the four hour time frame. Same thing for the one hour time frame. We are, you know, kind of in the stratosphere after this massive rally. I could definitely see a pullback potentially back to 23,300, retest this as support, and then get another bounce back up. Again, tomorrow we do have some news coming out. So get ready for the CPI tomorrow. I'll just pull it out for you guys. It's going to be coming out around uh 8 30 a.m not around 8 30 a.m it's going to be on 8 30 a.m sharp i'll just pull it up for you here there we go oh that's not it forex no not forex trading forex factory there we go let's pull up the forex factory go on the calendar and on monday tuesday we have 8 30 a.m we have the cpi coming out and then on wednesday we have the ppi coming out and on Thursday we have the bank or sorry the ECB monetary policy statement and then they're expected to increase by 50 basis points and on Friday we have preliminary consumer sentiment so a very loaded week overall so let's keep going here again if Bitcoin starts to dip back down I'm going to be looking for 23,300 to potentially get a bounce here but if we do keep falling from here we get hotter than expected CPI then I would expect a very big pullback in the markets because right now the markets are in a very fragile state. We don't really want more bad news because there's a lot of bad news already coming out here with the regional banks collapsing. All right, let's take a look at the S&P and I'll tell you guys why I don't know if Bitcoin will get 
more upside because right now if you take a look at Bitcoin let's take a look real quick right here before we continue our analysis you can see that Bitcoin is still getting some red money flow here on the weekly time frame that we did get a red dot now we're getting you know a bit of a neutral candle on market cipher but on the daily time frame we don't have any more green money flow right we are very close to curling back up in the green money flow basically because we're at the zero line but the VWAP right now is extremely overextended we just cut into that red money flow not too long ago after this you know massive rally we just cut into it but overall a pullback would be warranted here and if it does keep pulling back and we do have more bad news then i would expect bitcoin to actually potentially start to come back down a significant amount this could have been a massive rally just to fake a bunch of people out obviously i still see the bullish case that bitcoin could go up to thirty thousand. that's why i'm holding long and short positions on the spot market right that's how i always make some great trades i'm always able to to bang out wins every now and then uh even with the the price going up and dropping uh substantially uh so let's keep going here and i'll show you guys why we could see more downside for bitcoin right so let's take a look on the weekly time frame from the s p right now we can see that we do have some very big money so we we have some a good amount of red money flow on the weekly time frame and looking at past you know bear markets and crises that we've been in because right now we are in a bit of a financial crisis sorry the wrong s p chart so yeah there we go we do have a good amount of red money flow looking at past crises and past you know economic downturns we could see that once we got into our red money flow we usually take about a year before we finally find our bottom once we're really deep into that red money flow here so you can see once we cut into it it took us about uh, 300 336 days 365 days color whatever you want maybe you could do from the red money flow to the bottom if you do that then it's about a year right just over a year here before you find your bottom and when you look at 2002 the dot com bubble you can see that we didn't get our bottom until 600 days right and looking at the 1970s cycle right here when we had a high inflation this is which is basically the cycle that everyone's basically comparing it to once we cut into that red money flow we didn't find our bottom until 490 days and right now if you look where we're at we are only we've only been in our red money flow for about uh let me just measure it here We've only been in about for 189 days. If we do the bare like minimum here and we keep going to uh, let's say 300, 300, let's just say it's 300 days, then we still have ways to go, right? We still have until about July 23rd. If we do 365 days, right? One year, if we do a one year time frame, then you have until September until we potentially find our bottom in the market. Right now, the markets have not even bottomed because the markets are very very i would have to say very hopeful about a fed pivot and i cannot reinforce how many times jerome powell has said that their target is going to be getting inflation down to two percent and that there will be no pivot and there's no pivot in mind until inflation is down even with these regional banks starting to collapse the Fed can still bail out the banks and print money here and there just to, just enough to keep the banks afloat, but they will keep raising the rates and they may keep the rates elevated until something even bigger starts to go down, right? Right now, these small regional banks, the, the market's already calling for a pivot and calling for rate cuts after only a few small regional banks going down. This is, if the Fed already pivots after that, it will show you how weak the Fed's resolve is. Again, we're going to have to see what they do. We have the CPI numbers coming up. And then next week, we have the FOMC uh, federal fund rate. You know, we have the, the FOMC meeting and the federal, federal Fed's fund rate that is going to be announced as well. So let's just see what's going to happen. Right now, we have a 19 and a minus 3 with a red cross on the weekly time frame for market cipher on the S&P 500. So things are looking quite grim right now. All right. Things are not looking very bullish. Just saying what I'm seeing on the charts for the S&P. Again, if the I believe if the S&P starts to go down, then you will potentially see uh, Bitcoin go down as well. Unless uh, they start bailing out the banks right now at this very instant, then yes, I could see the case that uh, Bitcoin will start skyrocketing towards the upside and so will the S&P and most asset classes. But in that case, it's going to be extremely inflationary and we will no longer have 
10 to sorry we will we will no longer have five to you know nine percent inflation we're gonna have 15 to 20 percent inflation down the road and I, I that is an avenue that the fed could take but i see it as the least likely avenue i think the fed is kind of asleep at the wheel right now raising the rates kind of like how they were asleep at the wheel printing money right anyways that's kind of my take on what's going on just want to give you guys what let you guys know what i'm thinking let's take a look at the commodities now now that you've probably listened to all this uh, let's take a look at natural gas uh, natural gas right now is getting got a very nice bid today it was up over eight percent i believe at after the close we can see it was up yeah over eight per eight to almost nine percent in one trading session though so that's really awesome to see we are very we are nicely in the money on our boil trade now or at least one of them the other one i'm still going to be holding if once we start to head back up to three dollars and fifty cents and potentially four dollars and fifty cents for natural gas but overall looking very good right now once we if we could get more upside then that would potentially be our c wave here so you got your a and then your b wave and then your c wave would probably come up to maybe the three dollars and 25 cent mark to three dollars and fifty cents mark all right let's take a look at oil oil had a huge down day today it dipped all the way down to 72 dollars and 25 cents and then got a huge bounce from this pivot low here as you guys can see and we ended up closing the day right above support of 74 dollars and 56 cents and right now in the overnight markets we are down uh 0.72 percent almost uh, almost in 100 basis point almost one percent down uh for oil which is not good to see because oil you know as you guys know the more it goes down the more uh, we will you can see that demand is decreasing which could signal recession right more more and more and more recession talks and the fed and you know they keep reinstating it that they're they don't think that we're in a recession and we're nowhere near one because they don't want to cut rates they want to keep raising rates because they actually know that the inflation problem is probably bigger than the, than what they're making it to be right they're probably advertising six percent or a seven percent inflation but maybe behind the curtains it's significantly more because all the numbers are incorrectly <laughs> all the data is skewed because they're using a basket of variable goods instead of, of a fixed basket all right anyways i'm not going to get into all of that right now but i'm going to keep doing my analysis here let's take a look at gold gold getting a bit a bit of a down bit of a down day right now we had a very we had two oh, sorry three awesome trading sessions for gold after it bounced off the 1805 level it has rallied five percent from its lows here absolutely crazy again this is a fear play obviously gold is uh you know being bought up right now because of the fear in the market it is getting a bit of a tick down right now in the overnight markets let's take a look at what the dollar's doing again the dxy ran into support here right around 1803 if it starts to bounce back up you're going to get some resistance right around 1804 which it ended up not holding after all this was a very big down day in the market so we did see the dollar sell off significantly if the, D if the dxy starts to bounce back up then this is your going to be your mate your next level of resistance if you take that out and you get back above here then you're going to be testing 105 and after that sorry 105 yeah 105 flat and if you get over that then you got you got to take out 105 70 and if you can get above that then you got all you know you got a clear path to 107 0.705 all right all right i think that's it for today i think we covered most of the stuff here you can see that the russell 2000 was an absolutely free and an absolute very big free fall today as most regional banks were listed in the russell 2000 and which is probably why it ended up down 1.6 percent at one point it was down over three percent so still a pretty nice recovery overall for the markets but i think the markets are very hopeful for a inline CPI or a very uh, significantly lower CPI but if we get a miss tomorrow and the CPI is hotter than expected then I think that's going to open a can of worms and the markets are going to react very negatively and we can see as well that the bond yields got a very nice bounce here the 10 year yield got a nice bounce from this down sloping trend line as you guys can see again bond yields going back up pretty nicely today but that is not good for equities when bond yields go up and the dollar goes up it is bad and bearish for equities and it's not good for bitcoin either all right guys that's enough for tonight thank you for listening hopefully you guys can join me in the trade my training room tomorrow inside my discord i'm going to be there at 8 30 a.m eastern time and uh hopefully i'll see you there thank you so much love you guys peace